Today we have a very special guest, as you may know already, uh, who is coming to address all the questions related to the Yale Farming Lunch. He will be answering the questions you submitted days ago, but that's not all. We will also pick in some floor questions as well, so be ready to ask. And having said that, uh, hello Ken, how are you feeling today? Feeling, feeling excited and nervous. There's a lot of good questions being asked and yeah. Uh, can't wait to address yeah all the concerns from the community and yeah hope you guys will feel happy after this AMA. Excellent. Uh, me too. I'm actually very excited for today's AMA since we, since our loaders will get to solve their questions by you, our yield farming lord. <laughs> uh, can you introduce uh the yield farming for one of the for the people that are new to it and don't know how it works, please. So you farming is basically a term used in uh, DeFi, right? Where people can commit uh, some of the assets, right? Uh, into a protocol, right? Which allows them to provide liquidity for that protocol in a smart contract. And in return, uh, that smart contract will reward uh, those people with a uh, form of token. It could be the same token or it could be another token as a reward. So that's just a general overview of what new farming is, right? Yeah. Yeah. So basically it's like, you know, it's like a bank, right? Where you deposit funds in into a FD and in return the bank will give you returns in terms of interest. So this is a similar concept. But you farming is used uh, in the the term is used in DeFi, right? Where you where a smart contract is involved, where there's a lending protocol where users deposit a, a certain asset into the protocol or that smart contract, and in return the smart contract will reward you with another token or a similar token that you stake with. So that's just the over general general overview of what you farming is, yeah. Thank you very much. I believe it's clear now for the people that didn't know about it much. So thank you. Um, let's start with the questions, shall we? What do you think, Ken? You ready? Uh, yeah, let's go. Let's do it. Let's go. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so for the first question we have, uh, why did your Yale farming lunch go wrong even though the audit was submitted? Well, actually, there's nothing wrong with the audit. Uh, when we When we got back the audit report, everything was okay and it was ready to deploy, right? To, it's nothing is nothing severe or any major issues, right? Just that uh, in the audit report itself, there was a line of uh, calculation, which is the reward distribution function, right? So in the audit report, guys, um, there is a reward distribution function where it calculates how much reward is distributed from the smart contract uh, to the pool, right? So this function was calculated, the calculation was very small due to... Uh, which caused some of the issues to occur. So the value was so small that it was almost zero, right? So these values actually are determined by the total amount stake. So when we deployed uh, and went live, right, the to to total amount stake was in millions because, you know, we had a very good response from the community. A lot of people staked. And then the, the, this caused that, 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 that function to distribute very small rewards, right, which is almost zero. So... That's why uh, we in our inter internal testing, we did not account for this. The, count, the amounts were not as huge, right? We are testing in thousands, few hundred thousands, but not in few millions, right? So hence, this issue occurred. Uh, yeah. Uh, I see, I see. So it was like a lot of people, it was not expected. But that's, that's good, right? <laughs> a lot of people yeah. were interested in our yield farming. That's good. The next question is also about the contract. I think it's necessary to clarify as much as possible so there is no doubt about it, correct, Ken? Yeah, <clears throat> for sure, for sure. It seems like the contracts were not tested enough and this issue could have been avoided. Will the team be looking to do a testnet bounty program of or sort of for the experienced investors in upcoming launches? Yes, definitely. I mean, uh, after after what had happened, right, uh, with the launch of our youth farming, definitely this would be an, uh, the next step to, to solve this issue, right? We need more people to test, like the community or some of our experienced investors to come. We will deploy like a maybe a testnet bounty program or even a public public testing right prior to launching uh, our official marketplace, which will be coming up real soon. So yeah, this will be one of the good issues. 
yeah, to solve. Yeah. I believe too. I believe too that is really a good idea. Thank you. Thank you for addressing that. No mm. worries. Uh, the next question uh, is about uh, yield farming is a difficult practice that pu puts both uh, borrowers and lenders at danger of financial loss. Uh, users are at a greater risk of temporary loss and the price slippage uh, when markets uh, are volatile, right? How will you ensure that yield farming remains sustainable? Well, I mean, for me, yield farming is a kind of investment, right? You put in money and you expect to get back returns, right? Of course, in the crypto world, it's, it's a risky practice, right? There's always risk involved such as impermanent loss and uh, volatile markets and this will cause price slippage as well as impacts right in your currency which is uh, pegged to another currency if you are doing a LP token right so our main focus is actually our LOA BUSD liquidity pool right? and why is this so important is because uh, we want to bring in new investors and community to stake in our pool and improve the liquidity right when we do that when our LOA BUSD has higher liquidity Right, it's better because it will bring a a more stable uh, price in terms of when people trade LOA to BUSD, right? And hence the price impact will be much lower. And so, in case you know, when when in case of in terms of volatile markets, when suddenly you know some big investors or some whales start to to dump right LOA tokens, there is enough BUSD in in the liquidity to 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 cushion that price impact. So that will make stabilize the token in the long run as well. So that's why we, we, we allocate a lot of rewards in terms of uh, our staking portion from our tokenomics into the LOA BSD pool. Okay, okay. The community also contributes to a part uh, of a project success, correct? How does the LOA uh, team plan to improve on engagement and communication to the community and investors? Yeah, the community is definitely uh, number one in uh, LOA's uh, project or right. in any other project. Yeah. So, yeah, really thank you for everyone's support and those who are still with us and are with us currently. You guys are really, really important to us. So, um, in terms of how to we improve uh, engagement and communication, uh, we, we have a lot of experienced moderators, right? Such as yourself, Al, and those who are in the call right now uh, that have been working really hard with us and we have actually prepped them to answer and help all our community by submitting tickets in our Discord channel, right? And we have already, you know, briefed them on what needs to be explained to the community. How do we help uh, the community to answer their concerns, right? And in terms of investors, we have an investor relation team led by uh, Bowie, right? To consistently engage and update our investors. So we always, of course, uh, we always try our, our best to consistently improve our communication by having more community events, you know, to keep the community engaged with us, you know, to show them that, you know, we, we want to have fun with you guys, we want to spend time with you guys. And also, we we want to ask you guys also to participate in development-related matters. So in the future, where we have our bounty testnet program and whatnot, our governance, so these all are also very important. And it's very pivotal for the community to participate uh, in this project in the long run. Yeah. Yeah, the engagement uh, of the community it's also really important. Like the uh, the team, the team is uh, looking forward uh, for these activities with you guys. So so look forward to it as well, and get uh get on the look on the watch here on our announcement channels as well. The next question is about uh, what strategies does the team have in place to overcome bearish market conditions and ensure the milestones uh, can be completed according to timeline? Although we are halfway uh, through our mil mil milestones, uh, the current market condition is unpredictable, which means it could still maintain the, its bearish state in the uh, coming month. Other projects tend to delay things, which in a way declines uh, investors' confidence. Yeah, that's a good really question. Nice question. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, nice question. Yeah. Um, so in, in, in crypto, um, obviously, a lot of market conditions are depending on external factors, which is beyond our control, right? You have, um, yeah, regulations coming up. You have uh, wars coming in and stuff like that. You know, we can never control this, right? 
But what we can do is we we can control our development, right? So our development, we have to, we have the funds to develop, right? Everything in terms of the game, in terms of marketing, in terms of operations. So our development will never stop, right? We still need to develop the game eventually because we have limited budget and we have a timeline to to do, yeah, to 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 what you call that timeline to hit, right? So our development will never stop. So we need to allocate our budget specifically for each milestone, right? And the products we are going to release and the features that is going out, right, throughout our whole roadmap. So although we might delay our roadmap, right, in terms of launching the date, but the development as we we cannot, we won't do it for the development, right? But in terms of launching, right, we cannot go against the tide. We cannot launch something which is, you know, when the market is bare. Because that will have a minimum impact, not to, for us as well, but also for the entire community and the new investors who's coming in. So we want to launch something that will bring in maximum impact, that will increase our token value and confidence of our investors, as well as the exposure. You know, when you launch something, you want it to be big, right? You want people to hear about it. You want people to join in. You want people to hype in. Not when the market is bearish, where people are like, oh, okay, uh, it's not a good time for me to invest right now and stuff like that. So yeah, I can't. So we will always always think of the impact that it will bring to the market, right? When we want to launch something. So even if it means dividing our roadmap, but it is delayed for a really good reason. And yeah, I think delay is normal, especially in crypto, especially in real world, right? When even like when a, a hype game is launched, right? For example, Diablo, you know, it's from Diablo 3 to 4 is delayed for so long, right? So it's like, you know, it's expected to have delays, right? Sometimes it's a good marketing strategy or sometimes it's just because, you know, something is, is a, that's an unexpected market condition. So it's not a good time for them to actually launch the game, right? So all this, you know, it's, but what I can tell you is, right, our development will never stop, but we will continue developing and we will launch when the time is right so that everyone will be confident and there's a maximum impact for the project. Hope you guys uh, uh, heard this, uh, this answer from Ken. It's really important to know. <clears throat> and for the next question, uh, it's it's kind of interesting as well. Will we be able to see daily updates of the current circulation supply? Uh, circulating supply. We know that CMC is not updated and verified for the LOA token. Uh yes. Uh actually, currently we are we are working on that, right? Uh, it will be in the next patch update, I believe. So uh we are going to be using CoinGecko platform, if not mistaken, for our reference, right? As the circulating supply is the most accurate one out there in terms of. Uh, yeah, the circling supply. So you guys can have a look at CoinGecko. I believe it's about 91 million uh, right now. So in terms of LOA tokens. So yeah, in the future, when the patch update is released, you're able to see that circling supply in the treasury pool, right? So yeah, keep an eye out for that. Okay, so go CoinGecko, right? <laughs> to take yeah. note. Okay, thank you. Uh, why is there such a large percentage uh, of withdrawal tax? Uh, sites like Biswap or PancakeSwap offer 0% for staking just a couple of days compared to uh, 181 days on your main site. Uh, with that said, staking looks extremely unattractive. Can this be explained? And will there be any bonuses for stakers during this half year period? Uh well yeah that's that's a good question and I believe the high the large percentage it's actually cause we want to encourage long term holders right and especially when we start launch launching yield farming right the API is really high right you and and now as of now it's actually really limited to get LOA tokens right the only the only uh means of of getting LOA tokens is buying in for the market or getting it from yield farming there's no other way to get LOA tokens right and because of that you know. This is uh, really important because we need to control the ecosystem. We need to maintain uh, the circulating supply that is given out daily, right? Is to protect uh, every stakeholder out there as well to maintain the value of the token. So for, for are there any bonuses for stakers? Um, definitely. So we are, we are planning on uh, some events, uh, some campaigns that will reward long-term holders in the future, right? So if you have been staking for months, three months, six months, or stuff like that, Definitely, we will be rewarding them, right? It can be in terms of NFTs, uh, special access, and so on. So stay tuned for that. Okay, guys, please stay tuned for that as well. Do hear Sir Ken, please. He's our Yale Farming Lord. 
don't forget about it. <clears throat> Next question is about the contract as well. It's actually good to address to keep addressing these kind of questions. So here we go. If there were if there were only bugs uh, found in Yale farming, why do you need to create a new smart contract in order to fix these bugs? Well, initially, when uh, when we after launching Yale farming. Um, most of the community has raised some issues uh, regarding the display is glitching, uh, the refresh will reset the rewards and stuff like that. And that was really, really good, um, a good feedback from the community, which I really appreciate it. Uh, and the team appreciates it as well, as well. So we definitely looked into it immediately, right? And so when we look into it initially, the issues that we found were actually on the UI. We thought we were, it was on the UI front end because it was just a UI glitching, right? In terms of the harvest display. However, however, when we start uh, to address these issues, we finally discovered that actually the reward calculation distribution in the smart contract was the main issue, right? Which I've mentioned uh, on the first question itself. So since we already deployed uh, the U farming uh, smart contract, we needed to redeploy another one in order to solve this issue, right? But rest assured, nothing has been changed, right? It's just that we added a decimal to make it six decimal places to fix this issue. And we need to redeploy it. But uh, thankfully, the community has been really supportive in terms of migrating uh, to a new smart contract. So I uh, really appreciate uh, the patience. And yeah, thank you so much, guys, for that. So yeah, so far, no issues. Major issues has been reported. So we are really thankful for that. And yeah, we're also going to be focusing on other new, new things that we want to release in the marketplace itself. Is there a limit to, uh, to the quantity of total LOA stake to maintain higher APR? As long as the tokens are staked, will it gain uh, throughout the period even mm. if you stake it for years? Is there a limit uh, of, of staking to maintain high APR? So there's no in our smart contract, there's no limit in staking. You want to stake 10, you want to stake 100, you want to stake thousands. You know, stake millions is entirely up to you. Uh, of course, the more is better because not only it will, of course, more people staking, the APR will reduce, right? But actually, come to think of it, it's a good thing overall for everyone because when there's more people staking, there's more total value locked, or we call it TVL, right? And that will actually help to maintain, stabilize the price, and increase the price as well of the token itself. So in return, whatever you're earning actually increases as well for those you know who are staking less and getting lesser rewards. So we do not have a compounding function in both our farms. So I believe the second question was, will it gain throughout the period if you stake it for years? Of course, you'll, uh, you'll earn a simple uh, reward interest, right? Not that we do not have a compounding function. But however, we, are, we introduced the LOA single staking pool for a reason, right? So users stake LOA to earn LOA. So that you can actually, whatever you earn from the LOA BUSD or whatever you earn from the LOA pool, the L amount of LOA tokens that you harvested, you can use it to compound and harvest into the LOA pool itself to increase your rewards over time as well. Yeah. Having said that, fam, don't forget to keep farming your tokens. I believe all of us are staking, so keep doing it to keep having an income there. Yeah. <clears throat> Feels like we should have protested the reposing of the term staking from being a reward for work in a consensus mechanism with the risk of losing collateral into this current just lock it off market to receive more coins risk free. It's a staking except it doesn't actually do anything. Uh, your position is not at stake and it provides no benefit to the system technical Otherwise, perhaps, beside the financial benefits for existing holders of less liquid sellers, how does LOA solve this problem? Yeah, so I think I think this question is a bit uh, uh let me summarize this question. So, in terms of um, basically, it's staking, right? Um, but provides no benefit to the system except to uh, existing holders, right? So to me, I, I, I don't think this is a problem, right? Uh, people stake, they lock their tokens is because they believe in the project and they are willing to support the project long-term. Having more uh, tokens locked in the ecosystem, it's good, right? Because it increases liquidity in our pools, especially our LOA BUSD, 
right? That will reduce price impact and volatility. And this will have a positive impact on the token in the long run. So from that's that's for the internal point of view, right? That's for in our people like us in the ecosystem right now. That's how we see it. But for people outside the ecosystem, new investors, right? New people who actually he just heard about LOA and they want they are interested in this concept. And they the first thing they're gonna look is is the token out, right? They're gonna look at the price. Is the price what is the price of the token right now? And they look at this price, it looks like the price is pretty good due to you know the amount of token stake that will increase the price. It looks like it has a really uh strong uh it's very uh, what you call it stable and the price is good. So it looks healthy, right? And this this will bring them much more confidence, right, to invest in the project. Rather than looking at a, a coin where it goes up and down, up and down, like today it can go $10 and then it can go like $1, that kind of thing. So yeah, I believe staking is a really important aspect in the ecosystem. And it's for everyone, not only for us, but for people out there who wants to join our project. The upcoming question is really interesting. Uh, as the liquidity APR goes down, it's possible that the amount of APR is going to zero. Will the staker lose an amount of gain? How do you manage or balance this situation and bring us a healthy farm? This is, I believe this is one of the most uh, uh, repeated questions we had. Mm. Really? Then why didn't you put it at question yeah. one? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. It's really yeah. important. <laughs> it's okay. No, no worries. Um, so, yeah. Based, based on my understanding, I don't think the API will ever go to zero, right? As long as there's uh, rewards constantly added into the smart contract, right? For people to, to harvest and as well as uh, the token has a specific value, right? Obviously, API will be almost close to zero if the token is like 0 0.000001, right? But when whatever rewards you get you is basically zero, right? But yes, there is a chance that your current rewards Today, you can be getting $10 a day, and then tomorrow, you're getting $5 a day. But that is, that is expected. That is due to increase of liquidity, right? Sunny's, there's an influx of funds coming into the liquidity pool and people are staking. So, but that is expected for all you farming protocols, right? Uh, nothing stays uh, lucrative in terms of the APR, right? But however, having said that, that I mentioned earlier, high, having high liquidity in our farms will generally increase the token value. So whatever you're earning right now, right, it will actually still benefit you not to, for those who are staking early and those who are currently staking in our pool, it will still benefit you because whatever you're earning might be five times in value, might be 10 times in value in the future. Yeah. Will, will the game run in an off-chain or on-chain server? With all the problems in the Yale farming launch, it shows that the dev team isn't experienced with a smart contract, and I am worried that the same disaster will occur if it were to run on an on-chain server. Ouch. Interesting one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. um, so to answer the question, yeah, uh, the game will run in off-chain off server, off-chain server, right? However, the marketplace will be on-chain no. server, yeah. So that's what that's how we are bridging the game uh to the NFT marketplace uh to the web three space. Yeah. Okay. Did it hurt? I hope a not. Bit, a bit. Uh, a bit. <laughs> it hurt to me as well. <laughs> well, I mean um, people can say what they want, right? But at the end of the day, yeah, just take it in and it just accept accept the feedback and you know, do our best. <laughs> mm. Improvement, it's always uh a good <laughs> it's really good. <clears throat> exactly. Um Will the 60-day duration for capsule staking be adjusted if there is a delay in the marketplace? We would like to have some capsules unlocked for the alpha or beta uh, release. So, yeah, that's a good question. And, yeah, um, there will be necessary adjustments be made to ensure that the staking period is adjusted based on the alpha or beta launch, right? So, if alpha launch was, let's say, on example, in September, so we would do that, that the two months before, right? In terms of the timeline. So we want to make sure that there's a two months period when the NFT marketplace launches. And then two months later will be the, the game launch in terms of alpha or beta. So that the NFT skins are ready and released for some people to actually use it and play it in the game. So we will uh, adjust this timeline accordingly. 
However, in terms of the duration, it will still remain the same, 60 days, but the roadmap will be following based on that uh, alpha or beta launch. No. Yeah, which I can't confirm yet. Um, maybe alpha might, might not be using empty skins, maybe beta will be using, I'm not sure yet. But when more con concrete uh, development and confirmation from uh, Gavin has been made, then we will be announcing uh, all these details later on. Yeah. Okay, great, great, great. Um, next question is about roadmap. According to the current roadmap, uh, we have a short period of time to yield farming before we start collecting our tokens to stake and unlock the capsules. Since, th since there is no info on how many tokens uh, we can earn, earn by staking NFTs or playing in the alpha beta version, there's a risk that once the game releases, there will be a small amount of people to engage in NFT matches due to the staking requirements to unlock skins. Does the dev, uh, the dev team has a plan for that? So I believe um, staking NFTs is actually a similar concept to you farming, right? So it's just based on how many NFTs are being staked in the pool. So we cannot determine uh, how much you're going to get. Let's say I'm having a basic skin. How much uh, tokens am I going to get a day? We, we can't tell you that because you might be the only one who having a basic skin in the market and you're staking. You're definitely going to get the whole pool, right? <laughs> but as more and more people stake, right? Uh, definitely your, your yield will decrease. So it depends on how many NFTs are being staked, right? That's how much you're going to be getting. And this is determined by your hash power, guys. So when you go into the marketplace, you can see that uh, each NFTs will have their specific hash power rate. And this hash power will determine among, among all those who have staked with you, right? You're going to, you're going to take your hash power divided by that total amount. Basically like your, the total stake, right? Hash power. And that will give you your APR that will reward you with uh, the tokens that you're going to be getting from staking your NFTs, right? So it depends on how much NFTs are being staked. And uh, moving on to the mm -hmm. second question, right? Um, yeah, in terms of, you know, when the game is released, there's going to be a small amount of people to engage in NFT matches. I believe the staking requirements, uh, we do have a backup plan you know, that will follow the release of the game. So we'll definitely ensure that, you know, the staking requirements are fulfilled. There's a, a, a nice timeline for people to to vest their capsules and unlock within two months, right? To ensure that a lot of people will unlock that uh, and get their NFT skins to be ready to be able to use these skins in-game immediately, right? When the game is launched. So don't worry about that. Yeah, it's all fitting into our timeline. Um, Sir Ken, where do you see uh, LOA in after the VR market? Would you like to know? I well, We would like to know your perspective. <laughs> <laughs> I still see LOA thriving in the bear market, to be honest. And um, due to the fact that we have the right fundamentals, we have uh, a hungry driven team who's willing to ensure this project is successful and working really hard on it. And I believe that we are on the right track. And honestly, this is one of the first games I've seen in the crypto space that is a mobile game, right? I'm I'm sure most of you guys have experienced playing other NFT games and looking at other NFT projects, and safe to say that we are one of the first in 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 the crypto space, and we are based on a game right on a mobile game that is played by three hundred million around three hundred million players all around the world. People love to play games. I mean, it can yeah. be a it could be Flappy Bird, it could be a mobile game, it could be a FPS game. Any everyone loves to play games, right? And we know that the game scene is like really like you know booming it's a booming industry right since you know 10 to 20 years ago right who doesn't play games nowadays and people love to play games generally right and they like to win they become competitive even though they are not earning anything from it they still love to play i mean i, I would say 95 percent of the people right here they play games previously they used to play games right uh, let's put aside nft games but you play games Dota, Mobile Legends, you play a lot of Maple Story, you know, you play a lot of uh, computer games, but you don't earn anything, right? So now we are bringing, yeah, we are, yeah, we are changing that scene right now, right? Into playing yes. something that you love and get and getting rewarded for it. So as it will, it will follow, right? The growth will follow, the impact will follow definitely when the project is developed, the game is out and officially publicly released, you know, the, the trend will follow it, especially because uh, this has never been seen in the world in the crypto space yet. So I'm quite, yeah, I'm quite bearish on LOA. 
to be honest. Sorry, bullish on LOA. Yeah, and I see a great future in the project. Yeah, me too. Actually, at the end of the day, the majority of us are gamers for life. So I believe we all agree on that and we will never, I mean, we would never imagine that us, the gamers, could uh, generate income by playing without being a pro, right? Because when you're a pro, at least you, you earn because you're a pro player and that. But without being pro and anything, uh, generate income by playing, it's something like, uh, we are in the future. I believe we, that we are already in the future. <laughs> yeah. Why not, right? Yeah. Anything can happen. Of course. Uh, is it possible to earn more LOA tokens by just staking a small amount? I'm a beginner and I hope you can share some of your thoughts. Hi, beginner. Uh, nice to have you. Uh, yeah, I mean, thanks, thanks, for, thanks for hearing about our project. And it's, it's uh, really good that a lot of new people are coming in. Some people who don't know much about crypto, and some who just you know, know how to play mobile games or are interested in mobile. And yeah. Uh, we have a lot of guides and tutorials, especially in our white paper. So you can have a look on that. But um, moving on to your question, is it possible to earn more LOA tokens by staking a small amount? Um, I think I've addressed this earlier. So this depends on your share of the pool against the rest of the people. So if you're staking one LOA token against 100 peop uh, LOA tokens, you're going to get 1% of the pool, right? So if your share is relatively small, then the rewards you earn will, from staking will be small as well. However, since you are considered an early investor, you know, I, I believe just give yourself some time. Uh, eventually, the tokens that you have earned will grow. When we complete each roadmap, you know, one LOA could be worth a lot in the future, you know, like Bitcoin, one Bitcoin. Imagine <laughs> that. That's very optimistic. We'll but, be you know, billionaire. <laughs> that's, that's really optimistic, but you know, you never know. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I mean, a lot of coins like, you know, XE, like, you know, have hit the peak of $160 for one AXS. So, you know, why can't we be better than them? Or, you know, why can't yeah. we reach that? Yeah. So, they yeah, are definitely, yeah. Just start small. It's fine. I, I believe in uh, small investments, especially a, a lot of uh, crypto gurus or, you know, a lot of uh, influencers from crypto. They have mentioned, you know, when you want to start in crypto, always start small, right? Uh, invest your own risk, invest in what you can lose, right? Do your own research and, and, and stuff like that. So it's okay to start off small, but eventually when you start seeing the development of the progress and stuff like that, it will bring you, that's, that's why it's really important to give that confidence, right? To, to the community. Then eventually more and more people, you know, will believe in the project and then, you know, more people will start to, you know, stake and, you know, try to get LA tokens because it's going to become a scarce uh, resource in the future. Yeah, at the end of the day, you can stake uh, the amount you'd like, right? To stake, you'll still earn, uh, we will be earning, right? Uh, LOA tokens. So that's good. That's really good. Yeah. Uh, with less than a month left in uh, Q2, will the team be able to deliver the remaining features of the NFT marketplace, uh, such as MP, NFT staking, fusion, yeah, um, so um, the team has been working really hard uh, on the remaining features of the marketplace, including myself and uh, the tech team. So as you know, there's a lot of external conditions, right, that, that are not within our control, but uh, we have accounted for it and we have uh, looked into our timeline to cater for these conditions, such as uh, audit. You know, we can never know how long an, aud an audit might take. It could be two weeks to three weeks and then they get back to us and then suddenly there is an issue with the contract and then we need to to fix that issue which will take time and then we need to resubmit it for audit and then wait for the, the reply to get us back that audit report so normally this process will easily take one to two months right and that is just only for a few smart contracts bear in mind that our marketplace will be having about 10 smart contracts all integrated into one right but we have adjusted our timeline according to that, right? Market conditions as well, as well as, you know, unexpected bug issues that we have faced uh, in our youth farming. So these are all unexpected, right? You will never really know unless you, we do vigorous testing and as you all have mentioned, uh, a bounty test testing as well, right, for you guys. So I believe delays are expected among almost every project out there. It's, uh, it's become a norm, right? But of course, we do our best uh, not to have that delay. Because we, but we want to 
ensure that everything is working fine in terms of functionality, in terms of the product itself, in terms of the exposure, in terms of the back end and everything. But bear in mind that we also want to launch it at the right timing, right? There's no point launching a product which is the best product in the world, but no one is hyped about it. That would be just a waste of, waste of resources and time. Can you imagine Apple launch uh, the first iPhone and no one cares about it? They, they won't be, there, there, won't be there, there won't be an iPhone 13 right up, up to today. Yeah, correct. <laughs> yes. Maybe, probably <laughs> oh, iPhone 1 and then that's it. Okay, close company, nobody <laughs> buying an Die. iPhone. Yeah, so we, we want to follow the right you know, market conditions, the right timing so that when we launch, right, we want to make sure that's the, that's a maximum positive impact for the community and mm. for all our stakeholders. Because who wants to make you guys sad, right? We want to make you guys happy, right? Especially our early investors, our community. And we want to take care and make sure that we guys, we, we, are, we ensure that the project is successful together. Yeah. So yeah, that's my answer for that question. That's really, yeah, it's really good to know, actually. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> thank you for answering all the que these questions from our beloved community. But let me tell you that we haven't end yet. Because we have a good news. Uh, we will be having an open floor today. So uh, you guys can raise your hands to ask away your questions now at real time. So uh, who would like to begin? You just have to press the button of the hand there here on Discord, and you'll be you'll be able well we'll be able to notice you and enable your your microphone to hey uh, G G G Gaming. Yes, um, my question is you. Uh... The web report system for AFKs, players, and leaders and cheaters using oh. MapUp. All right. All right. Okay. Yeah. Got your question. Thanks, GG Gaming. Uh, yeah, I believe this question has been asked many times. And to be honest, I, I really hate this kind of uh, AFKs or feeders or cheaters, you know, and we definitely will address this. Um, there will be a report system for sure that you know people can report like uh you know like mobile legends you can report people for a lot of things right <laughs> intentional feeding af king and stuff like that so we will have a report system where we allow community to report and then we will have our system to check as well as to to see if this guy really did it and then of course uh certain penalties or punishment will be in place for that player uh, so this is also, I... yeah this is also one way yeah to, to control yeah my second question is, your skin and NFTs will be a low price, like a Mobile Legends price? You mean, you mean low price? Oh, like, like Mobile Legends, is, their skins is low price, $5, $10, $20. You buy that the skin like a Mobile Legends? Uh, no, it will not be. I mean, the price is yet to be determined because we haven't launched, but... Of course, the price can, can fluctuate for NFT skin. That depends on market and demand and supply of the NFT skin, the utilities, right? So, yes, the price may be low or it may be really, really high. You never know. It depends on the market, you know, how they perceive to the, the value of the NFT skin itself. But of course, being too low is not good for, for our NFT skins because there is a limited supply, right? There's 331,100 NFT skins available as of now right so having a low price for the nft skins is uh it's, it's not healthy but of course having a too too high nft skin will create a barrier for people so of course maintaining something average um you know within that range will be the best uh, optimal option for us so i can't really tell you the price right now it really depends on the market yeah my third question is the rank is to alpha test we have a rank in to alpha test Oh, definitely we will have ranking system, right? Uh, we will have ranking systems, which I believe Overlord is like Mythic. So Overlord is like Mythic. Yeah, so you have that ranking system that you can climb up and there will be a season as well, right? Similar to Mobile Legends where you have uh, maybe two months to chase a, a specific season to, to get uh, to that rank. And then of course, at the end of the season, you'll be rewarded with specific uh, season exclusive rewards. Could be NFT skins. Uh, could be LOE tokens and so on and so forth. So definitely, there is, we have a ranking system for that. That's my question. Thanks, Gigi. Have a good day, man. Thank you, Gigi.
Uh, one of the questions is, uh, is the NFT staking the same as token staking where there is a daily allocated token to be released? All right. Okay. Yes. Um, there is. Thanks. Good question. Yeah, I think no surprise nobody asked that before. But yes, there is. A, you see in our tokenomics, there's a 8% uh, that is allocated for NFT staking. So this 8% um, will be daily distributed in the form of rewards to NFT stakers. So yes, there is similar to yield farming. So that's why it's, it depends on, you know, whoever means, who, sorry, whoever unlocks the NFT skin first, whoever gets in early in the NFT staking will definitely be rewarded with a higher APR from the 80 million tokens that are being released uh, throughout the few years. So yeah. <clears throat> Hiya. Um, Ken, in terms of um, the gaming sector, as we speak, I am finding many game projects um, who promise to deliver X, Y, and Z, but unfortunately, yep. they never turn out to be what they set out to be. I just have one personal concern in that today we've seen no game development. Now, obviously, I know you're going to go through set stages, but when are you going to actually share what's going on behind the scenes in terms of the game side of it? I, I'm not personally worried about if you set the game to launch next year or six months from now. My issue as an investor is what's going on as we speak. And will you look to update the community more in terms of giving that, whether it be footage or behind the scenes? Because I haven't seen that to date. All right. Hi, Andy. Um, yeah, great question. And to, to answer your concern as an investor, the reason why we haven't been um, showing any game development as of yet is because we were more focused on the U farming launch and in terms of uh, marketing the U farming. But as as we move on into the next next couple of weeks, uh, we will be showing more on the game development uh, progress. So I, I've I've got the I've got the highlight from my my game development uh, lead that Gavin that he would next week we will start rolling out uh, some game development updates for you guys. So tune in for that. I'm not sure what it is yet, right? But stay tuned. Uh, next week, we'll get it out. So uh, because we are anticipating the marketplace to be launching in uh, later on, right? So in between, there was going to be a really quiet, and you know, a really dead period. So that's where we're going to roll out some of these game development updates for you guys. So stay tuned. Um, actually, we have an exciting announcement coming tomorrow. So uh, we're actually going to have our game development lead, Gavin, sit down in Discord on a bi-weekly basis to share his updates live in a video stream. So I hope this will help assuage some of your fears that there's been no progress, but there definitely has been. And he'll be happy to take questions. So think of it like an AMA session, but with some live stream as well. So you can actually see him open up the game and demonstrate stuff on request. So I think that'll be very exciting for the community. And I hope that answers the question. That would be amazing. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> See, now we're, now we're talking. See, from an investor's perspective, Ken, I'm not really too worried on yield farming and marketplace. My concern is capabilities of delivering the and not these short-term things. So what you've just said, Stephanie, there, that's that's game changer for me. If we see something like that, that 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 for me, that's massive. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Steph, for, for answering Andy's question. And yeah, Thank Andy. You. Uh, yep. Thanks so much. And Andy, I think just to add on, uh, I think we, we communicate quite often in Telegram, uh, Vivian here, the assistant project lead. So Stephanie uh, and I, we talk very frequently. I think uh, depending on the, I would say, feedback or the engagement from the community, uh, we can do different variations of the game updates. So one of the form would be through this Discord, where we have that video stream, uh, Gavin will on his webcam, he will share screen, he will show you guys exactly what does he do on a daily basis. So you see a lot of Atalanta skins, you see a lot of splash arts. Uh, he'll actually take you all through the actual development progress from the way they do the rig animation all the way up from the way they draw the 2D models and then translate that into 3D models how the, the different elements within the game works. Uh, one exciting thing I particularly like would be the development of the map. So we have actually just gotten our first draft of the map in our, uh, or, or what we think would be the most ideal look of the map. So there will be some stuff that he'll be sharing. 
So if let's say we think bi-weekly is really not enough and you guys are hungry, right? Hungry for more. We can definitely scope and make sure it you know scales into a faster and larger and more exciting pace. So do let us know what you guys like. Uh, I, I think Stephanie will rec record everything that you guys like. She's also in the chat with you guys. So do let us know. And I hope everybody is excited about it as well. Yeah, no, but that's excellent. I just think if if the team and the project themselves just show people that the progress is being made, I don't think that needs to be regular. I think as long as there's some evidence that that's happening, it will just take some of those doubts away versus other projects that kind of don't deliver that, if that makes sense. The main difference that I would um, hit ourselves versus other projects is how frequent we communicate with our investors and our community. Whatever mess that we get ourselves into, example, the, the recent uh, fiasco with some bugs that we found, we admittedly admit that, you know, there were some issues with the smart contract, but we quickly rectified it. I think Ken was really on top of things. One thing that we are not afraid to admit is that we are willing to listen and we are willing to, to quickly adapt to whatever's happening in the market. So thank you for your feedback. Actually, right after you spoke to me that day, Andy, that's where I spoke to Stephanie. And I think she quickly pulled up that game dev updates. Uh, so I hope you're happy and I hope that everyone else uh, will quickly tune in to, to listen a little bit more on it. Yeah, and no, I look forward to it. Right. Thanks, Andy. Yep. Yeah, thanks, Ken. All right, see you around. All right, Elle, um, so uh, are there any more, any more questions on the floor? We have a, we have a really interesting question. Uh, it says, can I stop working and play at LOA to be rich or should I keep my job? Um, I mean, you never know, right? Uh, a lot of people play X Infinity when they lost their jobs in the Philippines and they have made a, a quite a good uh, income, right? So I believe uh, we are no different from them and I believe there's potential for that. But, you know, uh, um, just play the game first. If you're earning a decent amount that you're happy with, then yeah, uh, do do what you want to do, right? You want to stop working, you just want to play LOA, it's up to you, right? <laughs> I can't stop you from that. <laughs> okay, so we have another question uh, from our, one of our moderators. Yeah, she's addressing uh, she, uh, her community. And it's, uh, in the next update of Yield Farming UX uh, UI, will you add the actual fee of stakers? Yeah, so, uh, I, yeah, Kate, yeah, I believe she has mentioned that to me as well. So that will be coming up in the next patch update, right? So right now you can't see the withdrawal fees. You can just see uh, the summary or overview of the general uh, withdrawal fees but in the future um, you're able to see like you know what is the current withdrawal fee so let's say if I stick like for 181 days right I should be able to see like my current withdrawal fees like zero yeah so we are working on that that will be released uh, in the next patch update when Kate mentioned that I'm like okay this is something that is a good suggestion as I you know I listen and I immediately like you know added it into my bucket list one needs to be done for the next one <laughs> next update yeah actually we have you can raise your here that is uh, more towards the mm. rewards of uh, yield farming so uh, the question is, 150 million of the total supply is for staking rewards. 89,285.7 LA will be released daily. That is good for 1,680 1, days or less than five years. So after that period of staking, will there be no more staking or are there any other plans for this? So of, of course, uh, they're, they're, the, the, eventually if the calculations are right, you know, yeah, the pool will run out dry in terms of rewards, right? But that's um that's the reason why we have you know treasury pools and stuff like that and you know there is an option to in introduce you know possibly secondary tokens in the future right or you know treasury pool where there's governance where people you know like will want to allocate those rewards uh for for staking rewards as well so there could be a, in, in, let's say in case of five years right time down the road that the staking supply uh, the the portion dries up right there are other alternatives uh. To, to encourage staking uh, to, to maintain that mechanism, right? But that one is really far down the road and there are a lot of possible outcomes that I have thought of. And yeah, so yeah, rest assured that, you know, don't worry, you know, there's always a, there's always a mechanism that will encourage a lot of people to stake, especially for LOA, the ecosystem as well. All right, thank you. Thank you, Ken, for your insights. Uh, is there anyone else who would like to raise their hands and ask a question? For now on the floor, I think uh, we see a lot of uh, questions regarding the game. Uh, I think you can save all those questions uh, for Gavin when we do our dev sessions in Discord. So uh, stay tuned for the announcement. There is a marketing question, you know, about choosing influencer gamers. Well, probably Cheryl or 
Steph, you guys can answer. Let me take a look at the question. How will you choose influencer gamers when the game is out? Actually, right now, we're already in talks with a couple of uh, big name influencers. I won't mention who they are because we haven't locked them down yet. But I can assure you that they have massive followings. Some of them above 7 million on one platform. And basically, um, the way we target gaming influencers is that, number one, they have to be a mobile player. Number two, preferably a streamer or a pro player. And number three, they have to one, to be excited to play LOA. But of course, this will be addressed closer to the release of the alpha. So do stay tuned. We are very excited to review the names once we have locked them down. Hope that answers your question. All right. Thanks, Steph. I think that was a pretty detailed explanation. Hope, hope that answers the question. Uh, there is a question for Black. Uh, what's your next step to keep uh, the LOA price or increase the LOA price? I think that's 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 the everyday question. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I believe, of course, having the maintaining the price means uh, less people selling, and increasing the price means more people buying. So definitely, we need a reason to to keep uh to encourage holders, right, to keep the the utilities of the token there, so that people are encouraged to hold, as well as um ongoing development updates, right, like Andy mentioned, right, in terms of the investor point of view. That, you know we need to roll out and keep the community excited and to give them the consistent updates on what's been uh progress right in the development stage so that will keep people hyped up especially upon uh when we are nearing our alpha tests right in terms of increasing the price definitely marketing will play a big role in that in terms of bringing the exposure of the project into various platforms and getting a new audience uh, a new a, a continent or even a new country to know about LOA, right? And that will introduce more buyers and more people who are willing to invest in LOA. So this is all what we are, we are trying to do. So that's on the high level kind of thing. So hope that answers your question. Blackma301198. Okay. Uh, we have another question <laughs> from Arm Bon. Is LOA system secure against hackers? The LOA system secure against... What do you mean? The game system or the marketplace? It's a really broad question, but definitely we have uh, security is one of the most in, important things, especially when you're on the okay. blockchain space, right? Everything is transparent, everything's open source. So definitely we, uh, we have taken uh, different kind of measures, right? Such as getting the right auditors, such as getting uh, the right uh, people to check on tests, to verify, to ensure that uh, everything is you know safe for community before actually launching it. So yeah. I would say it's pretty, it's pretty okay. Bad luck is street luck. Hello. Uh, yeah, um, I want to ask that when the beta version of LOA will release and in Q2, in quarter two, when it will be released, July or August. And another question is how many heroes will be released in that beta release? Uh, for example, five or six heroes like that. Okay. Uh, oh, you're asking about the alpha, right? Alpha uh, test? Uh, yeah. Beta, beta test. So uh, alpha test is expected to be launching in Q3, right? Not sure when, but that one is get for Gavin to answer because it's more on that game development side and he's working really hard on the alpha. In terms of hero release, eh, what I can tell you is it's going to be definitely more than five. I would think about six heroes or more more or less six heroes for the alpha test itself. So, you know, I think when 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 time is coming, you guys can start voting on like which hero do you want to play? You know, out of the 10 heroes, then you guys can vote. Like the top six heroes, we will be using it for the game alpha testing. Yeah. So yeah, that, that is what I can tell you for now. But stay tuned for the game development updates. Uh, I believe Gavin will also address this question as well for you. All right, thanks. Thanks for your question. Thank you. Bad luck. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Do we have any other uh, community member that would like to, to ask? This is, this is the most intense AMA I've ever participated in. You guys are really great. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, All right. Hello, Malka. Yeah, I just want to ask if you have a plan for scholarship program. Or any perspective about that? So for I, I believe we are looking for a lot of uh we are still looking for a lot of guilds to partner with, 
And in terms of scholarship, yeah, there is a there is a program that we are working on for them as well. So I I I I I'm not really sure on that much of that info right now, right? But uh, maybe you can ask. Uh, I'll I'll get uh, Bowie to answer that. I'll ask him Bowie to on regarding this, and I can get back to you. But definitely, uh, guilds and everything, it's, 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 it's important for us. And we also uh, tend to partner with a lot of them as well. So definitely, uh, a, a, specific, a specific scholarship program might be in play for them. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks, man. Thank See you. All right. Thank you. Thank you all for your very interesting questions. I think um, it's about time we wrap up. Ellie, you want to take it away? All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, family, for participating here. I hope you guys are clear now with all the questions you had. Uh, thank you so much, Ken, for addressing the questions as well and answering them. Uh, it was so nice, a nice time to we had here today uh, with really interesting questions. Uh, so thank you so much all for being here. We appreciate it. Um, before we, we, we end the session, we'll have uh, 10 lucky winners today. Uh, so you guys uh, will get a DM by Cheryl. Uh, so please be aware of that as well. Check your DMs to see if you are one of the lucky winners. And remember, it's Cheryl uh, that will be uh, texting you. So be aware of scammers just in case. And yeah, uh, that, this, that will be it for today's session. It was a really nice time uh, having you guys here today. Thank you so much for participating. And thank you again, Ken. For, for being here with us. Thank you so much for having me. And yeah, it's never, I'm never tired or bored of, you know, talking to the community or having AMAs with you guys because you guys are awesome and you guys always ask the, the right questions. So thank you for all the support and thank you. And I'll see you guys around soon. <laughs> thank you, Ken. Thank you, everyone. I believe we'll have a AMA recap, uh, Cheryl. Yes, we'll be having a recap article and also a video in case you guys want to watch it again if you miss Ken's voice to watch. Uh, so we can look forward to that uh, within this week. Okay, that's great. That's great to know. So if anyone uh, missed it or got here late, uh, you'll be able to hear the AMA. Do not worry about it. So just remember to follow us on YouTube and you'll be able to see all the videos there. <laughs> okay, so I think that will be it for today. Thank you so much again for being here and have a nice uh, day and start of a week. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>